All right, so this will just be a quick video to review some of the things we talked about in class today as far as what intervals are allowed and what makes good melodic writing, so on and so forth. So let's look at this example here. Notice we are in A major. Uh, we can tell that simply by the key signature. We have three sharps. And then notice the bass line here starts on A and ends on A. So we're going to keep thinking about the key of A major because remember certain scale degrees are going to work in certain places better than others. So it's good to keep in mind what key you're in as you're going through these examples. Good intervals to start with at the beginning, as you may recall from the sheet I gave you, are a third, a fifth, or an octave. We'll go ahead and start with an octave here. So there is our octave. I'm going to go ahead and put in our interval. Always while you're writing your counterpoint and you're realizing another voice above or below the given voice, always include the interval as you go. This will just make sure that everything stays on track and that you're not accidentally using intervals that you shouldn't be using. Now we, again we have a choice. Where do we go next? What note would be appropriate going from this A? Well we have several options. The next bass note is B. So we could do a fifth above B which would be F sharp. We could do a sixth which would be a G sharp. We could do an octave which would be a B or we could do a third, which would be D. Now the octave is out, right? Because if we did to an octave, that would be parallel octaves between our first chord, our first two notes and our second two notes, so that's not gonna work. I'm gonna set us up for actually the third note by going to an F sharp here. So let's go to F sharp. Now this is gonna present a situation for us. Notice what scale degree we have in the bass here. This is scale degree four in the key of A. That's going to give us the opportunity to use one of our special dissonances. And if you look at your sheet, you can see that anytime you have scale degree 4 in the bass, you have the option to use an augmented 4th. So let's try that here. So an augmented 4th above this D is going to be G sharp. So that creates our interval of an augmented 4th, which we can write in. And let me back up and fill this in like I said I would before to create our 5th. There we go. Now, to resolve this augmented fourth, what do we do? Well, it's very simple, right? Uh, remember, the easiest way to remember this is that the leading tone really has a strong pull to go back to scale degree one. In this case, G sharp has a strong pull to move up to A. And notice our bass line is resolving exactly like we want an augmented fourth to, resolving down to C sharp. Let's take a listen to what this sounds like so far. Perfect. So that's our fourth that resolves to a sixth, as it always should. Excellent. From there, we can just continue on using our normal and allowed intervals and then trying to keep some sense of a good melodic line going at the same time. So we have our A here. Well, why don't we just continue going in sixth? Remember, parallel sixths are perfectly acceptable, right? Parallel sixths are fine. We like them. Use them as much as you want. Just don't use too many in a row if you can. Now, uh, the next note I'm going to go to is a G sharp again. Remember, G sh this is now a skip in that top line where B is skipping down to G sharp, so it's no longer stepwise motion. So we'd like to turn it around the other direction if we can. Uh, that G sharp, by the way, gives us a third. So can we step up in the opposite direction going to the next note? Absolutely. Gives us an A, which gives us parallel thirds. Moving right along, let's keep that soprano line, our top line, continuing up. Notice the bass line now is headed back down, but let's keep this up to create some contrary motion. Uh, again, differing types of motion are always good to create some variety in your counterpoint. So if we continue this up to B, notice that gives us the interval of a fifth. Then moving on, let's keep the soprano line going up. It seems to have a good time going up while the bass line's going down. Move up to C sharp. Notice that ends up creating an interval of an octave. Then we can create a little skip down to our leading tone G sharp, creating the interval of a sixth. And then obviously that G sharp's gonna wanna resolve to 
A in the end. Okay, so let's take a listen to this whole example now. So in review, we can see we started with an octave, contrary motion to go into the fifth. Then we have our similar motion. You know, this is a great example of similar motion. The upper voice is moving up by step, and the bottom voice is also moving up, but it's skipping from B up to D. So they're both moving up, but in different amounts. So that's our similar motion. Then contrary motion for the resolution of our augmented fourth. Then parallel motion, then more contrary, then some parallel, then contrary. Notice there's a nice balance between different types of motion. We like to see this sort of back and forth. Use one type of motion, then use another type of motion. If everything is parallel or if everything is contrary, it can get a little boring. So try to change up the types of motion every once in a while as you go through these examples.